Hi and welcome back to my playthrough of Arkham Horror, The Secrets of the Order expansion. Of course, it's the third edition of the game. Before I get started, again, a huge shout out to all of my patrons and channel members out there. You guys are all amazing. And I think in respect to the gameplay, there was only one thing which I missed, apart from really rolling poorly, <laughs> that is. I forgot the reckoning effect of one of those doom tokens here. Each investigator rolls, or oh, mythos tokens. Each investigator rolls one die. This is not a test. If your result is less than or equal to the number of allies you have, place one doom in the unstable space unless you discard one ally. And I guess, yeah, I think both Michael and Mark do have an ally. So let me roll the die first of all for, um, where is it? Ah, no, where is it? Oh no, oh no. Ooh, yeah, of course. Ah, this one died. It was Leland Williams. And ooh, I don't really fully remember if Leland was, or, I mean, Leland is gone anyway. So I think in this case, oof, oh, that's tough to take back. Okay, I'm not going to roll for Michael then. Let's roll for Mark Harrigan. We still have Jenica Capra with us. She is pretty great because again, after you defeat a monster as part of an attack action, you may remove one doom from your space. That's definitely, yeah, that's pretty great actually. Um, so let's hope for a two or more. And that's a six. Yeah, I take that. That's pretty great. But I think that has should be okay now. So I guess that was really the only mistake I spotted during editing. And I didn't really hear any noise from the crowd, you guys, in the end. So I think we can move back to the gameplay. We do have all those question marks on the boards. Pretty much investigation token or whatnot which we should try to get rid of. We need two different kind of colors and getting there is pretty much an action and discarding one clue token. And right now we do have three on the scenario card. So ideally we are only adding one and row and are incredibly, I don't know, lucky in this case. So I think all the more reason now to start with Agatha or with Mark, they both have a clue token. So in theory, she could go for a research action. Um, maybe getting the clue to the scenario card under ideal, let's say, circumstances. Then she would go for this action here. It's a color which we need. And Mark Harrigan could move over here going for the next one and hoping for the right result. So there is definitely a lot ifs in this case and we have an ally here which is also tempting and up there in the north side we have the graced fiend who is going to go after our allies and again every time an ally is getting eating a bystander in this scenario you're adding one doom to the scenario sheet we will see terrible stuff happening this round anyway so we will definitely flip the dark disciples card at least i'm relatively certain about this so how much should I push? And ultimately those two counters could be the same color and we're looking for different um, colored counters in this case. But I still think we want to add the research token on this. Again, the question still is, but no, he cannot move and do a research. And then if he would move here, we have two clues there. So ultimately I think, ah, let's do that. But I just noticed something, of course, Mark doesn't have the money to move an extra space. So maybe in this case, we need to really start moving with her, but then yeah, he cannot do it all, right? Oh, that's bad, we, look, we need one more action. Are you kidding me? So I think we are not going to make it anyway. So we can maybe stay on target then. So maybe, have her do this, maybe go after this one then instead. And he will start moving towards the other side because again, the South Church is still good, right? But then here are all those monsters, but she has now a good spell. So I think that's a tough, no, let's start. Let's start with her. With her first action, she's going to, yeah, spend two clues from the scenario sheet. So let's do that. Um, to reveal a marker at your location. So we have flipped it. Well, that's a blue one. And again, we are hoping for two different ones, kind. 
if the markers of two different colors have been read. I think we are not taking them into our position. They will simply stay here where they are. And I guess with the second action, we have to go for a ward action, I guess. How, how lucky do we feel? I mean, right now, and these are still Doom tokens that shouldn't be here, actually. Um, I mean, we know what the top card of the event I guess that's not uptown so we know and the gate burst is also out of course back then I still think we should maybe better prep just moving this one over here but then again hmm. no I think let's go for the ward action because yeah let's let's sorry let's go for the ward action so she's rolling five dice in total so she's still focused in lore and again we are looking for two successes and oh that's only one but okay i take it unfortunately we don't get any additional remnants for that which i also forgot to use again you can use remnant to pretty much um yeah avoid taking damage from your spells on a one-to-one -one basis and that's pretty much her turn so yeah let's flip that over and now i'm really torn between moving here or moving there to grab myself the ally because this is not an action we can simply go there as far as i remember i think so no it's an action it is an action so i had to move in here but i think we want to get rid of those allies because they keep hammering us yeah let's do that so he's moving one two spaces over here with his second action he's going to flip over this bystander lewis hayes a university professor oh you get plus two while ga casting a spell i mean this would be the perfect ally for agatha crane yeah i think we have to move down or we have to move her up with our next turn i think so yeah so for now of course he will take him for sure but that's already his two actions right he moved and he flipped yeah ah that was really a good one for her and then last but not least we are moving over to michael mcgillan who is still engaged with these two and yeah he's pretty much uh, he could die relatively easily um, I think he has to attack the coursing hound again because with the new keyword here, the retaliate, that's a problem. So if he's kicking him and not doing any damage to the coursing hound, the coursing hound is activating and is attacking us. And of course, that's not what we are going to do. We still do have the Chicago typewriter with us, which really didn't do us anything good. But overall, we are rolling six dice, but we still don't have any sort of reroll. The thing is, we still need to do um, something about this. On the other hand, no, we can still take this damage. No, I think we are good. So maybe I am going to focus again. And because we are going for an attack action, I will focus on strength for him. So he's rolling nine plus four is 13. What am I talking about? Five plus four is nine minus two is seven dice in total. Let's hope for the best. And we can use the reroll. The problem is we are fatigued. Right, okay, we have just focused, which you are allowed to do while you're engaged with monsters. And it says after you perform a focus action, discard this card. Nice. Okay, that was definitely nice. So I can now reroll without any problems. So let's see. These are one, two, three successes. Awesome. More than we needed. So I'm not going to reroll the others because bad luck or so. I don't know. But this means the coursing hound is dead. That was incredibly helpful. Yes, amazing. And due to his out for revenge after you defeat a monster as part of an attack action, which he just said, you recover one sanity or focus one skill of your choice. Of course, we are going to recover one sanity. That's really amazing. Nice job. He got rid of the fatigue. He basically uh, is now focused, which is great. He got one sanity back. So that's all really, really cool. I was 100% sure he's going to die. He can still die, but I think he's now in a much better place. Cool. 
Let's do the monsters face next. And we can do them in any order as far as I remember. So let's start with the crazed fiend. He will move one, two spaces toward this bystander down here. Again, they ignore in this scenario all their normal prey. This is their prey. If no, if there is no bystander on the board, then obviously they will go for us. Then let's stay here. We will have the massive lurker, the mummified Guck. Uh, place one doom in the unstable space, which is right now the train station, because there is no discard card out there. So that's problematic, but still we can take... Yeah, next doom is definitely a problem. This is then the outbreak, right? Um, but then we have the haunting dead here, which says place one do in this space. Okay, exactly. I knew there was something in this space, which is right now still kind of okay. Those were the monsters up here and something very funky with the camera just happened. I really will really use um, the money from my Patreon campaign to really invest in new equipment actually sooner or later so if you want to make it sooner than that then please feel to join me here on patreon or on youtube directly really helps a lot and we have the menacing bulk exactly um ah, crap we are getting fatigued again exactly that was the thing but okay um basically it will hit us for one and one so one can go here and the other one do we really need the warding stone it's not that crazy let's let's get rid of the warding stone that's fine so this is out here for good but i still think that this was worth it and these were all of our monsters right so we are going into the next encounter phase and i guess we are starting with agatha down here in uptown in the old magic shop where she was pretty much the last round and yes we do have an event isn't that lovely miriam shows you a collection of new tomes reveal the top three spells of the deck Hey, we had something very similar before, but now it's an event. You may buy one of them for half price. Round it up. Hmm. Now I really keep reading because I don't know. If you buy something, Miriam throws in an esoteric book on resurrection focus cults. Gain one clue from your neighborhood. Exactly. So we have to buy something. The problem is we only have one bug left. And yeah, if we are now unlucky and don't get the right spells, we don't get that clue. That would be terrible. And actually, we were kind of lucky in this case. We have the beast within. Let's not look at this. We cannot afford this. We get it for half price. We have the banishment. Once per round during your turn, you may choose a non-epic monster and test law minus one. If you pass, that monster disengages or investigate and moves directly to the unstable space. That could be nice, but... Mm, I don't know. The hunter's inside. At the start of your turn, you may test law. If you pass, attach this card to a monster in any space. And when this is attached as a reward, um, after you defeat this monster, gain the attached spell and research one clue. Okay, that can be nice, actually. But hmm, this is the better spell, I believe. So yes, we will spend our dollar, which is kind of problematic but we weren't able to move to the other space to the historic society anyway so i think that's still okay and absolutely worth it so we are going for the banishment yeah which means we have bought the spell we do get the clue here and we again can try to or we can now decide to use our occult principle you may place the doom in your space to gain one additional clue from the token pool and i think let's totally do that we want clues like crazy but of course we also have to add one doom to our space but i th still think that this was worth it awesome she will definitely go for a research action next and that was pretty much our event which we are discarding and the unstable space in st Ma oh it's st mary's hospital over here which could hmm, maybe beneficial let's see about that cool. then we have mark harrigan who is having a rather lame encounter here in the streets it's a scenic space depicted by this little tree here you come across a park bench beneath a stand of birch trees their leaves golden in the setting sun you sit and enjoy a few quiet moments of bird song warmth and peace you or an ally recovers one health and one sanity i mean that's amazing wow okay that's definitely a cool awesome event or 
encounter in this case, as we can really heal Janica quite a bit actually. Oh, I love that a lot. Cool, that was a nice encounter. Didn't really bring the story any further or the, the adventure any further, but it was definitely still helpful. Nice. Again, Michael doesn't have an encounter because he's still engaged with the monster. So we are moving into the mythos phase. First token here, which is another doom. So this could be pretty bad. Actually, it goes to Uptown indeed to St. Mary's Hospital, which right now is quite OK. But of course, we are not done yet. Let's go for the second. <laughs> another doom. Come on. Let's move back. That's the Miskatonic University, the own library, which definitely is frightening. Not only is this now the unstable space with all those monsters, so they keep adding stuff there. So that's definitely a problem for sure. Oh yeah, that's really bad. Then let's move down to Mark Harrigan. And that's another monster. Hmm. Okay. And in this case, we have to deal with a tail and cannibal. We had something similar before. It spawns at the most doom, which is either the train station or yeah, the own library. And it basically moves toward an engage basically moving. So I think in this case, again, we get to choose. So we are moving it up here to the train station. It will go after the bystander anyway, unless the crazed fiend goes there first, which is very, very likely. That's a blank. So again, we are flipping this, we are twisting this, and that's basically how I will place it in here. Again, not a big deal right now, but I'm relatively certain. Again, I haven't played this scenario before that at the end of the game, something you have to do here in the underworld. I'm really certain about this. And this is really great design because um, they're really using all the components here. It's not completely random stuff just here to annoy you or make the game overly complicated. They typically always come with a function. They also did that with Eldritch Horror already with those sideboards, which really do matter. You really have to go there to drive the story further. But yeah, also very nicely done here. Let's draw the two tokens for Agatha. Yeah, he already drew two and that's a newspaper a headline. All roads lead to Arkham, of course. Celebration of Arkham's history, culture. Tourist, I just can't seem to leave. Miskatonic Museum special exhibit by Mini Klein staff writer. A headline. Test observation and resolve the effect based on your test results. Mm, you disengage all monsters and move to the unstable space. Really? Really? We don't want to go there. Um, you disengage all monsters, move to the unstable space and spawn one clue. Do we have a chance to get three successes? In theory, yes, but not very likely. We can still discard, this is really a test now. Um, we can discard tokens, focus tokens. And maybe we should consider that. But ideally we just roll three sixes now. There is one. One is OK. The question is, should we really spend both of our things? If I would have rolled two fives and or sixes, then maybe yes. Of course, I could still go for clues here. But oh. I mean, the zero is really bad. But now we are moving to the unstable space, which is brutal because, yeah, look for yourself. It's still the own library, right? Yes, that's the case. Yeah, but I, I still don't feel it. I don't feel it. So let's, yeah, we are disengaging all monsters, but yeah, we are not engaged with any monsters, which means we are now engaged with both of these monsters. Isn't that lovely? Wow, these are really nasty. And then we are at least allowed to spawn a clue, which in this case even is the Miskatonic space. So, but yeah, I think this is pretty much a lost cause here, actually. So I will have to shuffle this into the top two cards. And then, yeah, we still have to draw another token. These headlines are really brutal in this game. But I mean, so are the Mythos cards in basically the second edition. Arkham, <laughs> it's another headline. You must be kidding me. It's curtains for Arkham. Longest running Arkham Playhouse closes. Final play, the king in yellow buffo. Mysterious goings on at theater. You suffer three or one that you place two in your space. <laughs> Think we cannot suffer to horror, right? Yeah, this would basically kill us, and I think we don't have any 
spells to prevent that. That's a start of turn, that's an action. Yeah, this doesn't come with any protection, call the dead. No, I definitely do not want her dead because, yeah, but I was so having so many plans with her. Oh, that's so terrible. So I guess there is no alternative. So we're adding two. Now again, the outbreak kicks in, which means we're removing three doom from the spell. Base. We are adding one, two here. One goes to the scenario sheet, which now has three, which means we are going to flip the Dark Disciples. When there is three Doom on the scenario sheet, flip this card. Bam! Ancient Hatred. Doesn't that sound lovely? The beasts and terrors that assaults you serve the great ones who ruled Earth before humanity spread across the world. Driven by a dark priest, the creatures threaten to overwhelm the usurpers who drove the ancient gods into exile in Kadath, the unknown city. Add one monster token and one blank token to the Mythos Cup, okay, and place one bystander in the unstable space, which is still the own library. You must be kidding me. Okay, let's do that. And then um, when there is nine doom on the scenario sheet, add card 138 to the codex and return this card to the archive. So the next threshold is nine. But again, we are now adding more and more tokens as we go. Okay, I have to take care. I think I still have a good amount of tokens here. I will add those to the monster cup right now. And I guess that's then basically the end of the round. And maybe I really should have paid attention. So we are basically moving into the next round. I flipped the Weeping Horn because, yes, it was a shrouded creature or a shrouded monster, but I didn't really read it. What it says after you engage this card, which we basically just did it. No, it was an elusive monster, right? Oh, I'm a cheater. I'm an awful cheater. Okay. Ooh, that's bad now. Yeah, I think mm, it wouldn't have engaged me, actually. That's the thing. Let me check the deck if there is another haunting deck because then I can still fix it. Yes, there is one. So I will. Uh, there are even three of those now out there. So I will shuffle these. So I haven't seen it because they're all different. And again, they're all elusive. So I shouldn't really have known that. I just noticed this. It's an elusive monster, so it will not. So this is now the monster here. I have to actively engage that monster if I do want to engage it. And the other ones, yeah, I will basically, one was here and one goes here. So again, it doesn't really matter too much. But yeah, sorry for the cheating here, but this would have been incredibly cheaty here. Way more cheaty because it was completely beneficial. It would have been an awesome ally here. Still think we can do that. Um, we can still go after it. But yeah, what am I going to do? The problem with the mummified goop now is we can engage it or disengage it actually it will not exhaust of course because it's a massive monster and while we are disengaged we can then really move out of the space the problem is where would i move to on the other hand we could now really say let's go after this mummified gook full force just getting rid of it i mean it has seven health right we are three yes she has her wreck spell right because yeah no the wreck doesn't really help us because this defeat one monster if we go with him first i mean with mark we could actually oh that's now really tempting we could do ah he's not really doing a lot of damage that's the problem so i think both of them together, I'm relatively certain they are not going to deal with it. We could now decide, but I really need to get out of this space for sure. And the next problem is this space up here is problematic. I really think we have to wait with her so that she can move out of this space. And then we need the research action, I think. We really want to get moving now. Yeah, let's start with her. I think we have to start with Agatha again. She's going to evade. Um, right now she's still rolling three dice, but it's actually only two dice now because of the minus one here. But yeah, I think we have to do that. 
and are you kidding me okay i'm getting rid of this token our focus token to reroll one die here come on five or a six no you must be kidding me let's do that again we really need to disengage we have to do that and should I go for another clue? We have three and I think we can get rid of one without problems. So I think let's let's reroll that sucker. Come on, we need one success. Yes. Yes. Whew. Okay, that was at least somewhat worth it. So we are disengaged with this monster, which means we are flipping this to the other side. But after you disengage this monster, place one doom in the unstable space, which is exactly this one here, I think. Where is the clue? Did I already discard it? I think I did. So we have a third clue here in this space, which is definitely a problem for sure. But now because we have disengaged all the monsters, that we are engaged with we are getting an additional action so we can so we still have full two actions so i think we have to um move out of this space now to the science building and i think we will stay here because there is still a clue to gain there at least and maybe something cool in the science building so we have remnants like crazy so maybe that is still a thing and i guess we have to go with the research action next we could go for the scientific method though, because when we are successful, we gain a research action basically for free. And we need to success and we are rolling four dice. So yeah, let's do that instead. Let's go for a ward action. So we are rolling four dice, unfortunately only, but we are looking for two success. This would be great. If you're really getting two successes and that's only one. Yeah, really pokered here that was bad mm. so that's the thing so we are basically removing one doom that's something but again we could now decide to go for something here mm. banishment wouldn't help us after you perform a ward action uh, two or more should we go we need one we basically only need one clue um on the scenario sheet mm. there's a good chance we get the clue i think i feel lucky Let's get rid of it. So we had one success here. Let's roll one of those dice. No, and that was bad. Okay, we are we are basically stopping to roll here. That was bad. We still removed Doom. That's not bad, but that was still not great. So again, we evaded. This gave us a movement, a free one, and then we basically went for the ward action. That's bad. And then, yeah, if you do, yeah, okay, we didn't flip this talent here. Hmm. Okay, but well, that was her turn. A very, very bad turn. She lost an awful lot of stuff. But yeah, she survived. And originally, I was going with Michael McLean to maybe evade this monster here because then he could have moved in here. But as we only have one clue on the scenario sheet, there's no real point in me doing that. So I guess we are simply going for an attack action against this fella here, the menacing bulk, which is a pretty brutal one too. I mean, we need three successes. We are still focused, which is good. So we can roll seven dice for him. That's at least something. And again, we can, no, I think we are still fatigued now. So we could go for an exhaust action, but I think, no, let's not do that. Let's not do that. So yeah, let's roll our dice and let's see how good or bad we are doing. And these are two successes already. That's cool. We still get two more rolls because we had seven dice. Yeah, and that's not even combined. It's a five. So we have to, I think we are definitely going to get rid of this. Wait a second. Were these three successes? I know here really checked the foot. This was really weird. I had two fives or so, and I don't know. I really don't know what happened here. So we are going to reroll one die here. I really don't know what happened here. And again, we are looking for one more hit. Come on. Yes. Okay. That was so incredibly important. Now that's cool, but I just noticed we have the fatigue condition still with us. But as we, I think we only had to remove one die. We had seven dice in total, which we would have to remove from the test, which couldn't be rerolled. So I think, no, we are good. 
and we only re-rolled one die out of seven. So I think, no, we are totally fine with the fatigue. Cool. So this is taken care of. We can now either, again, uh, recover one sanity or focus one skill of your choice. Because, yeah, we are out for revenge. This guy is no more. I mean, uh, I think the extra action here, which we are getting, is typically the good thing to have. Yes. Okay, cool. Now he finally did what he is supposed to do. So he's moving one, two spaces down here because we have some good chances for more clues down here in the historical society or in the south side neighborhood in this case. Nice. Okay, we still have Mark Harrigan. And honestly, I really don't know what to do with him. I'm really tempted to have him focus and move him here and then use his one-man army this time correctly because then we could kill and then together with I think Janica Capra we can remove one doom we need to do some monster damage uh, monster control still so I think yeah let's do that I talked myself into that so we are focusing here on the street space um, he is focused but we are getting rid of the other focus here we are going to fight now and then with our Basically, second action, we are moving to the observatory and we are using the one-man army. You may become delayed to perform an attack action as an additional action. So I think let's do that. But I also know that this crazed fiend is a pretty tough one, actually. So we are engaged with it. And oh, God, I think we I forgot something. Oh, I as I see the remnant token here, the menacing bug also, I believe, yes, came with a remnant, which we have to give to Michael. And yeah, we are rolling now four dice. We have a plus one. Yes, basically four dice. And yeah, we are looking for four successes. That's uh, three successes. That's pretty nasty. So let's see. Four, we need three hits, right? I mean, we still have Sophie's portrait with us. And ooh, that's now really tempting, um, but we have to reroll one or all, right? That's what Sophie's portrait says. Let me check. When you use your dog at the, I oh, know, one while resolving a test, you may suffer one damage. Reroll one die or all your all would be bad, of course. So I think let's use it. We are taking a damage. I think he can take it because if this monster activates and does damage, it heals. And that's really problematic. So I think we are rolling this guy here. Five or six, yes! It had to work, it had to work at some point in time. Cool, this guy is out of here too. I really do like that a lot. He's getting a gauge with the tail and a cannibal up there in a second, but that's still cool. We are using Jennifer, Jennifer Capra's ability, which allows her to do after you defeat a monster. As part of an attack action, you may remove one doom from your space. We have at least one doom there, so that was nice. And we are also giving him a remnant. Okay, so that was a pretty solid turn. Of course, I must not forget to delay him, uh, which comes with his dogged ability a little bit later. But those were all the actions of our heroes. And I think that wasn't terrible. At least Michael and Mark did pretty well. Yeah, she really had to struggle. Okay then, we are activating our monsters and we will start here and the order doesn't really matter too much. So I guess we are starting with the Haunting Dead. It adds a token here. We are removing three. We are adding one, two and a fourth one to the scenario sheet, which is okay. The same is true for the Mummified Gook. Place one Doom in the Unstable Space, which right now still is the own library here. And then this fella will attack. Uh, will move it will move one two spaces down here even though it is not his prey it's still going to activate it's going after those dudes down there so we are engaging it with mark and after this monster engaged you suffer one horror though that's not nice and we are basically getting one two we are immediately getting attacked then so we are adding one horror in here oh no i think we are adding it in here that's basically if, because we are getting engaged and then it attacks us right away so they first move and then they attack and then again it's one and one so i think in this case ah, we can add it here why not one and one yeah why not 
why not? I mean, yeah, we healed her, so I think she's pretty much, she's doing great, actually. She's a great help, a great asset for us. I really like that a lot. I think those were all of our monsters. So let's do some encounters. I think, again, let's start with Agatha here in the science building of the Miskatonic University. Yeah, it's unfortunately not an event. So let's see what we have. Dr. Graves is happy to pay you for your answers to his questions. You gain two dollars. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, we need dollars. Oh, yes. In order to move and do stuff. Great stuff. As the professor explains the more exotic aspects of his work, you attempt to stay calm. Okay, we need a will check. And she's only rolling two dice. No, that's not good enough. And I'm not spending my last remaining clue on this. If you pass, if you fail, his methods are gut churning. You suffer one horror. Mm, that's not great. But keep in mind, whenever she's suffering horror, um, she focus one skill. I think we are going with the observation now. I think we need the observation because she is going to go for a research encounter for sure. Up next and what next? And gain one remnant, exactly. So that's really nice. So she needs to use her spells now. I really have to see. I think maybe going for the call of the dead or so next. Yeah, okay, let's see about that. Mark is engaged with the monster. So we are dealing with Michael McLenn next here in South Side. And yes, it is indeed a an event called the Historical Society. A few members of the society huddle around a table and work on a sketch of the being sighted across the city. Okay, gain one clue from your neighborhood. Oh, I take that for sure. We just gain it. And then you inquire about it. Okay, we are doing a influence check, which is three dice for him. So let's see. Yes, there's a success. So we have to remove and the die is blocking our sight here. If you pass, one of them smiles and says tersely, inquiry is well and good, but take care of yourself, scholar. Gain one curio. Hmm, nice. Here are exactly two of those. Yeah, we have the map of Arkham. I remember that. And we have the secret page. But oof, again, that's the thing I was thinking about. Should we go with a ward action for him? Or should I really draw? Again, he's the gambler. So let's draw some cards. That's a magical curio. Yes, the silver key, which is extremely expensive. It allows him once per round, you may reroll any number of dice while resolving a lore or an observation test. Yeah, why not? This would again be the perfect card for Agatha actually for her research and whatnot. But yeah, for now we will definitely keep it. And of course we have to discard the card. So which is now the historical society is the unstable space. I think that's good for a change. Okay, I like that. I really do like that. But those were our two encounters for the round. We are moving into the mythos phase. So let's see what we get. We start with the lead investigator here. That's a doom. Yeah, and I was really happy with the historical society here. So it's uptown. Uptown, I think. No, that, that's not great. Hangman's Hill gets a another doom basically down there. Let's continue. And okay, we have a blank. So again, we are flipping this, Whoop. we run it randomly in here. So that's the secret path moving around the underworld. Then it's Mark Harrigan. Oh, that's the reckoning. Okay, we have to at least roll a die. And there was something here. Place one ally card face down in the street nearest the unstable space, which, okay, which again, we know where that is. Basically all the way down here. And then, then spawn one monster in the unstable space. Now that's not so great. What's, what do we have? A bloody titan. This can't be good, right? Yeah, it spawns here. I'm pretty sure it spawns here now. Independent of what it says here, it's massive. Uh, move to, I mean, it will move down here. So I think this is not a shrouded monster. So we can check it out for, yes, of course. And minus two. Oh, that's a pretty nasty one too. Hmm. Yeah, it's really an advanced scenario for sure. 
Okay, and then we still have the Bound to Darkness. Each investigator rolls one die. Yes, exactly. And again, um, we now have two here for Michael or uh, Mark. If your result is less than or equal to the number of allies you have. Exactly. No, that's the two. Oh, I cannot reroll that. Place one doom in the unstable space unless you discard one ally. Hmm, I don't feel like this. I mean, Jenny Khan could be something to consider because she is basically out dead and we used her already. Ah, one doom. Nope, I don't want her dead. We are adding this one here. And I guess that's basically all the reckonings out there, as far as I remember. That's yeah, only those two. There are still three tokens in the cup. And here we have a clue. This clue goes to the north side. I will take care of that. And then we are moving over to Agatha. And it's only the order of thing. It's a monster and doom. So let's see. This is the doom token. We will add the doom token to the north side. That could be problematic. Where does it go? To the train station. Yes, this indeed is a problem. So one goes in here, we have four, we are removing three, one, two, one goes to the scenario, sheet, which is now already at five. Again, I'm this this is now going to advance pretty heavily. And then I, do, I know really the second one is a monster or the last remaining token in that. So let's see what we get. And that's the gluttonous giant. A lot of giants spawn at the unstable space, which is now the terrain station up here. It's also patrolling. So it's also moving down towards our and that's a problem. They will move towards our mark here. Yeah, okay. I think then we have to basically place all of those Mythos tokens into the Mythos, mythos Cup. Not a TH there at the end. And yeah, I will shuffle this, but I shuffle it anyway. And that's basically the end of this second round of this video. And again, I will call it for today. I think two rounds per video is enough. Again, it leaves me some more breathing space in respect to any errors I might face if I continue too far ahead, then I tend to forget stuff. And I'm pretty sure I will find stuff that I may need some correction. But apart from that, I was really sure that we might have even lost the game by now already. But um, I mean, we have a good way getting some more clue tokens on the scenario sheet, which would allow then Michael to get after this token down there. He, yeah, he's definitely in a precarious situation. And then again, even if we then whatever, find those two, whatever different colored of those tokens here, um, this is not the end, of course. Then we will at least get one more stage of stuff. Maybe the final monster will appear or we have to do something more. So that's just, I think, late mid game. Um, what it is we are looking at right now. Again, if we are maybe flipping it, maybe this could be the end game, but ultimately we could also move into the end game with those doom counters here. So when there are nine, nine on the scenario sheet, then I'm pretty sure also the final thing will happen coming from the opposite side. Maybe this is then the, the nasty monster or we have then really typically an awful close timer or so to win the scenario before we lose. But yeah, let's really wait and see. It's a ton of fun. I really enjoy this game a big big deal and i really do hope you are enjoying my little playthrough here and yeah hope to see you soon in one of my other videos i guess the next game after this one is a little bit more euro ish so stay put if you are more into that if not then yeah hold on to this game or to this playthrough here as long as you as you need and yeah see you soon in one of my other videos and until then bye bye